Now I'll show you the invertebrate store, which is one of our largest stores. So if you want to come with me. As you can see, we've got loads of fossils in here and loads of drawers in, in what we call roller racking, so we can store things really efficiently. Uh, as I said, this is our invertebrate store, so everything without backbones. And principally, this is kind of organised in terms of evolution. So we start off with things like uh, algae, um, corals and sponges, fossils called bryozoa, uh, brachypods, scraptolites, gastropods, uh, bivalves, and then some really exciting things like ammonites. Uh, which I'll show you in a minute, but they're some beautiful things. Bellumnites, trilobites, and then we've got lots of crustacean, things like um, shrimps and things like that. And also a fantastic collection of fossil plants, one of the best fossil plant collections in the country, because we're right in the middle of the northwest coal field. So let me show you some specimens. So as I mentioned, we've got some beautiful fossil corals, and this is a gorgeous example of a colonial coral with each individual coral animal making up a colony. Um, so that's a really good example of a coral. Um, and then other things we have, I mentioned we've got a lot of ammonites. This is a very beautiful example of an ammonite. That's what it would have been looked like when it was originally found in the quarry. So to see the structure inside, somebody's chopped this one in half, so we can see the structure inside here. And as you can see, the ammonite animal was uh, a sort of squid-like animal that lived in the front of the shell. And behind that were all these chambers that were originally hollow when it was first alive. Now some of these are filled with a mineral called calcite. And when uh, it was alive, it either filled these chambers full of water, so it was really heavy and sort of sank in the water to sort of go down, or filled them with air to rise up. So it moved just like a submarine would move today. Another really nice example of an ammonite is this, this one just here. And as you can see, there's really gorgeous colours that actually reflect from the surface. And this is uh, made from a mineral called amylite. Uh, which is principally found in the Rocky Mountains in Canada, and um, is actually only made up from crushed ammonite shells. It's very similar to opal and has this gorgeous sort of uh, reflective colour. Other things that we've got, I mentioned uh, that we've got some fantastic trilobites. Um, trilobites are a little bit like woodlouse, but actually sort of lived in the sea about uh, up to 400, 500 million years ago. And this is a beautiful example from the Ordovician about 450 million years ago uh, from Morocco. As you can see, it's got these incredible spines. And there's lots of debate what these spines might have been for, but possibly things like increasing its surface area, so uh, predators swimming above would have uh, thought twice before attacking it, or possibly even for stopping it uh, flipping over if there was a strong current, or, or things like um, uh, looking more impressive to mates and things like that. So really beautiful things. And we get these sort of things out for A-level days and public handling. Uh, so these collections are, are often really well used. And, and just because they're not on display, it doesn't mean that we don't use them. So other really exciting things I've got to show you. This beautiful specimen here. This is from the same beds as the Archaeopteryx, quite famous beds in, in Germany and Bavaria. And these are about 145 million years old. And this fossil we've got here is actually a fossil cuttlefish. And you can see the actual cuttle bone, this sort of orange area just here. But the reason I really love this fossil is the sort of darker patch just in the middle. That's actually the fossil ink sac from 145 million years ago, which is just incredible when you actually think about it. And as I mentioned, we've got spectacular collection of fossil plants, which are uh, incredibly useful for things like uh, displays and research and things like that. And I often get this one out because I think it's just a beautiful example of the sort of things that can be preserved. Again, it's from the similar sort of time as the fossil tree on the, on the gallery here at the museum. Um, but a lot of ferns actually uh, lived at the same time. Uh, they covered a landscape that was very swampy but had lots of rivers flowing across it. And this sort of thing would, would have fallen into the edge of a river, perhaps gone to the corner of a river and in a slow patch and slowly settled to the bottom of a muddy bank. And all these incredibly detailed bits would have been preserved in very quiet conditions. Um, another fossil that I'd like to show you here was actually collected by Mary Stokes, who was one of the foremost social reformers of the 20th century, uh, mostly for birth control and things like that. But before she did that sort of thing, she was a, a, a fossil hunter and a paleobotanist. And these are some of the fossils that she actually collected in Japan. And these are about uh, four million years old. And this is from a quarry that's very famous for, for maple leaves. And it's a beautiful example you can see there. 
And the preservation is just exquisite here. See the edges of the, the leaf up there, the little toothed edges. And these were actually preserved in uh, a shallow volcanic lake, uh, which was covered by this mud. And she was the first person to find insects at this quarry as well. And this last one I'd like to see if I show you was something we actually acquired last year as another beautiful piece of, of, of amber. And uh, this again is fantastic for showing sort of preservation. And uh, again, amber is a sort of tree resin that flows down the side of a tree uh, and anything that happens to be walking across the surface gets stuck in the sticky sap. And here we've got a beautiful example of a relative of the aphid. And this is about uh, 40 million years old. And that's uh, pretty much it for this store. As I said, we use a uh, wide range of collections for things like learning and education. We do a lot of public uh, events where people can come and look and handle fossils. And also we do a lot of things like uh, research and a lot of displays, either displays here at the Manchester Museum, such as our Darwin exhibition, or uh, displays in other museums where we loan brilliant fossils out to, to sort of share uh, uh, the knowledge and the spectacular things that we've got in the collection.